For years, Commander players have been asking Wizards of the Coast to make Commander products specifically for them. But it turns out in this situation to be a case of careful what you wish for. <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to talk about Commander Collection Green. Yesterday, I was going through a bunch of old Magic products, some of it actually not that old. The thing specifically that I'm talking about that I found is Chandra's Signature Spellbook, which is fairly recent and is a perfect contrast point to Commander Collection Green to give you an idea of what I want to talk about in this video. So yesterday, I did an unboxing of the Chandra Signature Spellbook. If you want to have a full grasp of everything that I'm saying in reference, you can go and watch that video and come back to this one and catch up or go watch it afterwards or not watch it at all. It's up to you. It's your life. Live it, baby. All right, so what's going down with Commander Collection Green? Well, after taking a look at the Signature Spellbook, it made me realize that Commander Collection Green is really a symptom of what's about to start happening to Commander, an acceleration of an attempt to extract as much money as humanly possible out of Commander players, and it feels like a genuinely raw deal for Commander players. For the longest time, I mean, EDH, I remember when that started, because that's what Commander used to be called. I remember being in a convention hall and people wanting to trade for weird, random legendaries. It was usually just judges at first, and then it kind of spread out to the point where you could notice the effect when random old cards that you didn't think were very good Magic cards were all of a sudden in high demand and worth a bunch, and you're like, wait, what's going on? That's the Commander effect and slowly but surely it grew. And I mean, it was EDH for a long time, but then Wizards of the Coast came along and was like, hey, we want to be able to make products specifically for you guys, but we can't actually trademark Elder Dragon Highlander as a name, so we're going to need another name. And then that's when EDH became Commander, and that was the beginning of Wizards making products directly for Commander. Now, to give credit where credit is due, starting with the original Commander products that Wizards made, they were fantastic, especially comparatively to this Commander Collection Green. The original Commander decks had a ton of rares in them. You know what I mean? You could get like 30 rares, the uncommons and uncommons were good too. Like there was a lot of really good stuff and the price point on those decks was really reasonable compared to the amount of awesome stuff that was crammed into a deck. The Commander decks never felt to me like any sort of cash grab whatsoever. They felt like a product that was designed to get people playing Commander. The decks were never strong enough to be straight out of the box. I can dominate everybody, but that was part of the beauty of their design, right? Like Commander players love to tinker. One of the things that's cool about the Commander format is how like casual and flavor oriented it can be in the way that people are driven to do things. So they'll just get a Commander deck and either pull it apart for pieces or take that deck and start to make changes to make it into their own creation. So the original Commander decks were actually really great products, 100%. Now, uh, funnily enough, I think part of the reason for that is Wizards was still only treating Commander as an offhand kind of thing. Like they only ever made Commander decks for the longest time. And they would design cards in sets that were clearly meant for Commander, but those cards that were meant for Commander were never insanely strong and wouldn't dominate the form. Like, they wouldn't show up in standard and dominate the way that Omnath does. Like, you look at Omnath and you go, okay, this new Omnath is clearly meant for multiplayer. It hits every player. It's got big, splashy, powerful effects. This is a commander card. But the thing is, it's so powerful that it's oriented for standard as well, where it's just so, it's just so insanely strong, right? And that's not how they used to do things when they weren't paying attention to Commander the same way. Like they were just kind of like, oh, you guys want Commander stuff? Okay, you know, we'll throw you a bone. Once a year, we'll make you some Commander decks. That's what you get, have a good time. And we'll start making more cards that say each opponent instead of your opponent or whatever. And that was really all Commander got. And I think they probably should have just kind of left well enough alone, right? Like they, that was okay, right? But it, it feels like things are going to get progressively crazier, right? Understand that Wizards of the Coast has essentially sacrificed the standard format on the altar of let's get cards into other formats like Commander and stuff, right? So they'll make whatever sacrifices they feel are necessary to extract the maximum amount of money. I'm just saying. So now they're firmly focused on the Commander format, right? It's, we've reached the point where Wizards of the Coast knows that Commander format 
is a huge thing. For the longest time, standard was Wizards' baby. That's what they would focus on. They'd be like, okay, let's make this as balanced as we can and exciting and good and whatever. But they put a lot of effort into it, in all honesty. Like, I really feel like previous and the last couple of years notwithstanding, there's been management change and things, but for a good chunk, they put in a fair bit of effort keeping things pretty balanced and it didn't feel out of control. And that's why all of the bannings in recent times have felt so crazy because things were treated well because standard was considered the we need this stable standard can feed into other formats great if it does that fantastic but it doesn't have to do that now every standard set has to make cards that go out and bust the door down in commander bust the door down in modern maybe smash into vintage and look what that does to standard right standard went from being the baby to just throw it on the ground kick it a couple times in the ribs and we'll sell its broken ribs for an extra dollar like that that is the level of insanity it feels like sometimes with what they're doing and commander collection green in comparison to the chandra signature spellbook genuinely feels like a massive attempt to extract a bunch of extra cash without really offering anything more like if i was to say to you that they're doing a brand new secret layer and you get that secret layer it's got eight cards in it and it's 120 dollars right we're talking us prices It'd be like 120 bucks us right does that sound reasonable to you an eight card like 120 dollars secret layer mm, it sounds sounds a lot more steep than most of them right the only one that really got up into the higher prices was the fetch lands so you've got a scenario. What about if I told you they were going to sell the next signature spell book? You know, the, the, the signature spell books are like $25 items. What if I told you the next signature spell book was going to be $120? Wouldn't you feel like that was an absurd jump? Do you know, like, really? So I'm opening the signature spell book yesterday. And if you didn't go and watch the video yet, basically what it is, you open the signature spell book. It's a little booster pack. There's nine cards in there eight are special like check it out we've got a different frame some of them have different artwork or whatever but it's mo it's mostly reprint art but regardless you've got this special edition with special frames all this stuff the reprint set has a planeswalker and a bunch of cards keyed to that planeswalker so it's a it's like you could consider it like a theme secret layer whatever you want to consider it these products all feel like the same sort of thing commander collection green is just eight cards and unlike Unlike the signature spellbook, like the signature spellbook is set up in a way where they've got the eight cards in it, your ninth card is a foil, and it's randomized between the other eight cards that are in there. So any card that's in there, you can get one copy that's a foil. And obviously the idea behind that is to tap into magic players, let's keep cracking the packs mentality, hoping that you'll buy a bunch of the signature spellbooks, chasing multiple copies of the foil version that you want. You know, you're gonna want a play set of each foil so why don't we set it up in a way where you'll try and buy those and chase those but when it comes to commander players they go wait a minute we can't sell them nearly the same multiples yes there may be some players who are going to buy multiple copies of commander collection green but really commander players only need one ofs not four ofs like the standard players or modern or whatever else right so you get this scenario where they go all right we're going to sell them eight cards and we're going to price it at $120. And it's like, well, what about the random foil that they would get in there? No, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, what we'll do instead is we'll make a super foil edition where it's all foil. And we'll make that like 75 to 100% more expensive. And just sell it through the premium shops and whatever. And it's just this crazy scenario where they're literally selling you. Like, to me, this is the same difference as a signature spell book. Do you know what I mean? You, you can argue that... Well, look at the price of the Sylvan Library. Well, you can pick a card in, in the Commander Legends collection, com Commander Collection Green, whatever it is. You can pick a card and go, well, look at the high secondary market value. That's, it, that's irrelevant to me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not a print all the cards until they're at zero because nobody should have any value in their cards kind of mentality. But at the same time, like... The whole thing, Magic all along has had, yeah, reprint cards. Like now, we never had it before where it was like, oh, you want us to reprint this card? Great. We're only going to reprint it at the rate of what the secondary market says it's at right now. That's absurd. That's like direct single sales where it's like, buy, instead of 
just like, oh, this is a product. It's a collection. That's why it's called the Commander Collection instead of just, we're selling you eight singles directly. You don't even have the option to buy them individually, but they still want you to pay like essentially almost full price. And people will add these up and go, if you take all the prices of the cards and were to buy them on the secondary market, then you're actually, you're making like $22 or whatever like kind of crazy nonsense that is. But ultimately underneath it all, this represents Wizards push to pull more money out of Commander Player Pockets without giving them anything extra really at all. And I'm a fan of the cards in the Commander Collection Green, don't get me wrong, I love that green focus Sol Ring. It looks so, so cool. And the Bane of Progress has flavor text from Urza, so I'm not against the cards they put in there. I'm just against this process that they're going where they make all these different products to baffle us and it's all the same thing there's such an insignificant difference between a signature spell book commander collection green secret layer it's all just selling us a handful of singles and seeing how much they can get away with and it seems like they're taking even more advantage of the commander crowd and it's just going to get worse do you know what I mean? Like, you've got this situation. We have Commander Collection Green. And this is, all, like, as well as The Walking Dead that they did, where they intentionally said, we're not going to make this silver bordered because we want the Magic players in playing Commander to use this. Like, they're specifically targeting Commander, and it's just leading to driving prices up for Commander, which just, to me, it just seems like they're totally taking advantage of Commander. I don't know. That's just my, that's my two cents after seeing, I remember when I first saw it, I was like, oh, this is a cool product, but I didn't see the price. And then I saw the price later and I was like, that feels steep, but I never really connected it to the whole signature spell book and secret layer thing. And as soon as I did, I went, wait a minute, this just feels like they're just going, let's charge more for it just because we can, you know what I mean? Like they did with modern horizons where they're like, let's just make the price double. Let's just do it. You know, we can do it. We'll just charge more for it with no actual justification. And we'll just change the name of a product a bit. This is Commander Collection Green. It's way different than a signature spell book or a secret layer. And it's like, but it's literally got a planeswalker and a bunch of cards, just random cards like a signature spell book does. Yeah, but these ones are, they got a legendary focus. So, you know, you got to pay four times as much. It's like, how does that work? Oh, God. Man, I don't know. This is the kind of thing where when I see it, part of me is like, dude, I want to make a video talking about this and go like this to me seems like a problem. You know what I mean? But I also don't want to just be a bummer and just be like, oh, bro, everything, everything always sucks because it doesn't. There's a lot of like about magic, you know, but this kind of stuff, when I see it, it's like there's not there's not that many people speaking up who have any kind of channels or whatever. I mean, there are some, but there's not a ton of them just going like, look at this, man, this this ain't right. This ain't right. So yeah, ultimately that's all I have to say on the subject, my friends. So thanks for coming by. If you like what I'm doing here, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff is great for the channel. You can share the video around, you know, send it on over to your mother if you like. Tell her there's a handsome gentleman she should listen to. I will, I will not let you down, all right? <laughs> now that I'm done with all that nonsense, uh, link on the screen to me checking out the Exodus card game. Go check that out on my other channel because need the watch time over there, son. Thanks for coming by, my friends. I will see you all tomorrow, maybe some of you tonight in the live stream. Goodbye for now.